Oh. Okay, hi everybody. We are, we are live. live. We are okay, live. So welcome to uh, Rage Breed Meet and Greets. And we're here with uh, some of our affiliates and some of our staff. And we're just going to learn a little bit about them. So if everyone wants to introduce yourself and start off with Fran, would you like to introduce yourself, hon? Um, no, but yeah. No, I'm Fran the Savage, the Savage Ladies in Metal. Also a Rage Breed girl, affiliate, and <coughs> partner with Rage Breed and Karina. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let me tell story. Well, okay, Eric, what about you? <laughs> I am Eric Leviathan of Misanthropic Torment, as well as Misanthropic Records. Um, we've partnered with Rage Breed Radio, um, also Metal Devastation Radio. Um, what we do is we give underground bands a platform to stand on when there's so much talent out there that people overlook them because of finances or whatever. We feel that money should not be the issue when it comes to getting true talent out there. It's never been about the money. So with that, I'll move on to the next person. Cool. Okay. Okay, here you go. Um, so if you want to introduce yourself and what band you're in and what you do for Rage Breed. Okay, I'm Hugo Manzano from Ecuador, South America. I manage the, the group uh, Rage Breed for South America and um, I'm owner of the band Sangriento. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, really good to be in this room because uh, uh, I, uh, in these days, in one month, I, I will be in the US. So mm -hmm. I, I will be happy to meet uh, the guys that are in the US right now. For me, it's mm -hmm. really good to have some friends. I can talk, I can, I can show my music. I, mm -hmm. I talk to, I want to uh, join Misanthropic uh, Records. Is, is that right? Mm -hmm. I, I really want to show my, 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 my songs to, maybe we can, we can sign with you, I don't know. But uh, the thing Welcome, is, uh, I really want to have new friends right now. It's really good mm -hmm. to, to know you guys and I'm glad to be here. Excellent stuff. That's, That's great. It. And uh, what about you, Johnny? Uh, you want to introduce yourself? No. Hi. <laughs> yeah, no. <Johnny. laughs> Hi, I'm Johnny Chadwick from Rough and Rude. I also have, uh, oh, we've signed a, a deal with Rage Breed Records International. <laughs> and I also have a radio station. It's called Johnny's Rock Corner every Saturday night. It's the songs that we grew up on, and uh, yeah, and I'm going to be the first Savage Lady of Metals, so <laughs> I'm oh, a big wow. fan of them. I'm just waiting so I can get my song. <laughs> well, we are not we are not doing Savage Ladies in half naked, in thongs, with their booties hanging. We're a little more on the classier metal side. You still be sexy and keep your clothes on. We're trying right. to keep I that know, one instead. I'll the song around. It's no problem. Wear my pants. It's cool. I just feel sexy then. Can you get him to shave? Oh <laughs> shave. How you feel on the I'm inside. so old. The hairs fall off. They're already gone. Man, I don't know <laughs> if you're going to cut it as a lady, bro. <laughs> you you don't is... know. You okay, don't so know what... me. We can have What's Savage Harry. Of... We can do Savage Harry of Metal and he will represent. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I did leave out, and I shouldn't have. I apologize, but I also am an affiliate and partner with Rebel Radio, which cool. is coast to coast and fucking Rock killer on. as hell. Hell yeah! The boys mm -hmm. of Rebel Radio are great. Right. I'm I'm more specific partners with Gravesite, who is a booking company that Rebel Radio also just recently opened up within the last few months and they've been putting on some killer death metal shows. Mm -hmm. Fucking love those guys. Guys, nice, nice. I'm everywhere. Yeah, Everyone's nice. got a piece of a savage. <laughs> yeah. Eric, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what's really good about all this networking? It's it's like, you know, it's like we're affiliated with the different uh, you know, obviously affiliates around the world and stuff. But what's great as well is you guys can network with each other as well it's like so cool Absolutely. it's like a yes. massive mm -hmm. global metal family which is wonderful you know mm -hmm. and it's helping each other grow i mean i mean we talk about you know so many different things when it comes to music and you know and i think when people network it just adds that for bands doesn't it it, it, it gives you more opportunities for bands to you know look at different 
places and, and when you network together then they may say i don't know say they find savage and then you say i'm sorry, I'm a rage breed and then they'll be like oh what's rage breed have a look at that or say rebel radio and then get in touch with them and it's same you know and, and that's the thing because you're constantly giving uh, yeah. bands but also groups and other affiliates opportunities when you network together and that's always yeah. been my sort of motto is to rise together you know rather than sort of being separate because actually when you help each other everyone can grow everyone can rise together and it's great meeting everyone you know this is why i'm doing meet and greets because everyone gets to meet the bands they get to meet the groups they get to meet you know um the radio stations the labels and it just sort of gives people that other understanding of what why we do what we do as well so that's it's really yeah. incredible that all you guys are doing the same thing as well it's, it's one word yeah badass isn't it yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah the thing i, I want to touch on what you said if you don't mind um mm -hmm. the thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand at least the people that aren't in the unity not separation type mentality mm -hmm is that nobody we're all racing towards the same end goal all of exactly, us yeah. and we can't get to where we want to go by ourselves mm -hmm. and having an ego and yeah, as soon as most exactly. people push that out of the way and decide unity not separation which mm -hmm. is what metal mm -hmm. was founded on you know exactly. I, I get into the yeah i get into the metal history and our our scene was founded upon unity and not separation sure people had their issues but at mm -hmm. the end of the day look how many bands come together and play together that can't stand each other in real life yeah yeah, yeah. but it's still works. Like that. yeah it yeah that's really they're cool. doing it for the same cause and the same reason for the love mm -hmm. of music yeah. you that's put true. your differences yeah. aside and you come together in that unity and that's what yeah. makes the shit no, beautiful that's, that's what makes it real absolutely mm -hmm yeah and yeah. What, what i'm finding as well there's there's that it's, it's really good because i mean I, I know for a fact that with um some of the um people that have affiliated you know a few of them come to me and say oh you know do you know this guy because they said this and i was like yeah yeah i know them and and it's really cool because we're meeting more friends you know it's like if i hadn't joined with savage i wouldn't have met her friend amy who's really funny as well <laughs> she's really cool amy's, and no, it, amy's, it, it, a, it, amy's it, a nutcase i love her me and her together she's brilliant isn't she me and amy together i tell you something <laughs> i want to join the nutcase group but it's it's, it's great though because it's like you're already here bro me too yeah right mm. me too mm. um so so one of the other questions i wanted to ask was so um obviously you guys you know into your rock and metal what is your favorite genres so uh starting with you friend what's what's your favorite genre of metal is it like um you know a lot of people thrash like thrash yeah. is actually my favorite it's you know, i mean i love it i love it all i'm very mm. i'm so not genre picky i mean i love all mm. music regardless mm. i am very musically well-rounded i grew up with all forms mm. of music starting out with hip-hop you know my older brothers were mm. 10 years older than me that's all i heard was in saw them mm. break dancing as a kid and i would throw yeah. stuffed animals between their legs while they're doing head spins you know <laughs> and, you know but i started as i got older i started going my own direction and then you know as everyone knows huge slayer fan you know and i mm. when i was introduced to slayer when i was 16 that was it that was just mm -hmm. like in to the, now to this day it's still slayer you know i still love mm -hmm. slayer to death but it's thrash i just love thrash it brings out the rage it brings out the intensity, just mm -hmm. the whiplash. I'm okay with it. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> rash is my love. That is definitely my favorite. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Yeah, cool. What about uh, you, Hugo? What's your favorite mm, genre? My favorite. Mm -hmm. my favorite uh, brutal dead metal. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I love. I love the the genre. <laughs> I love the genre. Mm -hmm. I th I believe that the genre makes me more happy and feels more alive when I hear uh, mm -hmm. bands like uh, Necrokahis, uh, Misanthropic. Mm -hmm. It's a really good band too. Yeah. And I, I love Brutal. I love Brutal. Mm -hmm. I love all kind of Brutal, yeah. technical Brutal, Islam, mm -hmm. um, like old school mm -hmm. dead metal too. 
I love it, that. But I, in in yeah. the case, I, I I like to hear any kind of music, you know, like uh, um, classic mm. rock, trash. It's is really mm. it's, it's like the base of the of the, of the extreme metal, and um, mm -hmm. maybe I sometimes some soft music. I don't know. For mm -hmm. for the yeah. ladies, <laughs> depends the the, the <laughs> mood, you know. Sly dog. Exactly. If you can't bang the Slayer, then you got issues. Oh, no, man, I'm, just, I'm just saying, there's things that I've wanted to try to Slayer. <laughs> I don't know. I talked to Dom, and he said he was game for finding out. So we're going to work on it. Probably broke his hips. Okay, cool. So what about you, Eric? What about you? What's your favorite genre? Yeah. People are going to trip on me, you know, um, obviously I love death metal, but um, I grew up on bands like Kiss and Ozzy Osbourne, Twisted nice. Sister, um, yeah. you know, I, I love I love all genres of metal. Mm. I don't like separating metal into like categories because I feel like mm. that divides the scene and mm -hmm. divides people and tells people what they should like. Mm -hmm. But um. I love death metal. I love all extreme metal, but you know there is nothing like a band like Skid Row or Queensrÿche. Uh, yeah. You know they're, they're just they're awesome. Those, those melodies and those guitar solos they're, they're fucking badass, dude. Nobody mm -hmm. can mimic that. You know. Yeah. yeah, I'm a huge fan of '80s metal on every level. And yeah. just, I mean, that's, that was where you know. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, we got Kiss and all the other bands from you know late '60s, '70s. That started it, but it was the '80s that took that shit to the next level, oh, and yeah. that's well, what like, I absolutely love. You know, well, so I'm a well, definite like '80s fanatic. Well, like like with you, um, the moment I heard Slayer, like like my progression into metal went from uh, okay, my my uncle used to wake me up in the middle of the night to watch MTV Headbangers Ball. I see bands mm -hmm. like Ozzy, Kiss, um, Rat, yeah. Poison. Yeah. Um, and, but then as I, I think I was like 13, 14 years old, cause every time I listened to metal, I wanted something more extreme. I wanted to hear heavier. I wanted to hear harder. And I didn't even know at that time I was a kid. I didn't even know that harder existed. But yeah. as soon as I heard Slayer, I was corrupted for life. Then I hear Cannibal Corpse. I'm, I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> wow, this yeah. is some yeah. fucking shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then the heavier it got, the better it got to me, I mm -hmm. guess, because I'm an aggressive type of person, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah I feel you on that one, Dad. And what about you, Johnny? What's your well, favorite style? Uh, it's got to be good. It's just got to be good. It's got to kick my ass. Uh, me as a musician, I, I the first gig I was ever at, my, my mom and my and my aunt, they took me to Woodstock. I was two years old. You know, I'm an original yeah. Woodstock baby. We lived up, upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I love all that hippie shit, Hendrix, uh, Zeppelin. Zeppelin, one of the one of the first metal bands that came out, you know, badass. Um, and then uh, you know, and then the '80s uh, uh, with the posers and all that. It was really cool. It was a way to get chicks. But uh, uh, Testament, I love thrash. Mm -hmm. You know, Testament, oh, yeah. uh, Me Megadeth. When they came out, shit. Uh, I partied up with these guys here in Germany because they picked me out as an interpreter. <laughs> so I got really shit faced with Chuck Billy. Uh, I don't want to say anything else. I got him his lay here in Germany. But anyway, um, badass, you know, I love thrash, I, uh, uh, heavy metal. Dio, fuck, hey, respect Dio. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, friends of mine, you know, I, I went to most. I went to a lot of gigs, uh, really good gigs, but I went to a lot of shitty gigs too. But still, mm. badass Motley Crue, well, one of my best mm. friends, uh, best friends, uh, 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 Bullet Boys. I love Bullet Boys, you know that type. But oh. I, I, I throw in Megadeth. I did a great interview with Megadeth when they did a, a acoustic gig in Florida. It was badass, you know. Megadeth yeah, acoustic. Nice. Come on, how yeah. bad is that? Yeah. But I would like to hear that. I don't think I've ever heard that, so I'm definitely yeah, gonna look into that one. Yeah. I need to check that out. Yeah, try to get it. I don't know because I we, I interviewed him, but we we weren't allowed to film the concert. But I did interview him. Um, no, I anything that's good, you know. Shit, sometimes I I love jazz too. 
a good jazz. <laughs> as, a ma- as a matter of fact, this morning I was drinking my coffee, trying to get, you know, I was giving up on the hangover, but I said, no, let's go with the beer because, you know, I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not a quitter, but I did throw in some <laughs> ABBA, okay? Take a chance. Well, crazy me. Bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, take a chance on me. Shit, my nipples got hard. What the fuck? You know, <laughs> Any, it's not a first. That's not a first. I know that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything I can take clothes pins on the clicker, I I love it. <laughs> so you know, well, genres, it's just got to be good. It's got to be good. It's got to make my ass move. And that is, hey, this is awesome. And the new bands that, that that's out now, uh, um. A deep, there's a band here in Germany. They fucking kick ass. My ex guitarist. They're called Demorph. I'm gonna hook you up with them, mm. uh, uh, Karina, because they they're really badass. Uh, shit, you know all that. Uh, Sod. One of the best gigs I saw. Yeah. You know, Stormtroopers and Death. Fuck yeah. You know, but I I I'm more old school. I like uh, I, I I appreciate what what uh, what the death metal and uh, thrash metal and uh, 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 what do they call it? Angel dance. I, I enjoy all that, but mm. me personally, I, I like I like that old hippie stuff all the way mm. up to the to the good old fuck rock. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fair play. I mean, I must admit, when when I was growing up, I mean, one of the first bands I ever got into was um, Guns N' Roses. Then the first CD I ever bought was Unbroken by Pantera as a first single. And then um, I think the first EP I ever bought was Carcass. You know, the Heartwork EP, didn't Yeah, um, yeah. And then I had um, so an album EP. But the thing, the thing with me is, when I was really young, I kind of listened to so much because back then it just used to be called rock music are you into rock music right, you know right. do you remember that yeah. back in the day there was never really any i mean there was subgenres, but it wasn't so extensive it was just are you right. into rock music yeah i'm into rock music you know yeah and then we were um, considered as freaks you know <laughs> yeah like when we i was really growing up it was I mean, rock and metal yeah yeah exactly that and yeah. um and, and and the thing is, it's like you grow up on this stuff, and then it starts becoming popular. Which is which, I suppose, in hindsight, really. I mean, back I remember when it became really popular. And I was like, oh no, I don't like this. I don't like this game. But actually, do you know what ended up happening? It it did actually open doors up for a lot of bands. And oh, yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. You know, and when, when, and people that got into the sort of more Diet Coke metal, if you like, started to listen to the heavier stuff. Because like you said, that when you first got into music, your taste became heavier. You know what I mean? And isn't it strange yeah, that how yeah. when you first get into stuff and then all of a sudden you're thinking, do you know what? I just heard this really brutal riff and it's grabbing me, you know? And <laughs> it's like... And then you all of a sudden you listen to stuff like suffocation, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I love all my like real yeah. death metal stuff. Other level. And, yeah, I mean, you know, there's been some great bands, but then I can still sit there and listen to something like I don't know Sabbath, and yeah. uh, you know Led Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So that, that's yeah. really kind of cool because it's it's interesting to hear what you guys you know what your favorite genres are and it's it's great great to hear as well and it's i always tend tend to find as well like um a lot of people that are in this business they really love their classic rock and and they also like the heavy stuff as well which Mm -hmm. is kind of cool you know well well, i started out with the blues i was the only Mm -hmm. white guy in the blues band you know first playing guitar yeah Mm -hmm. and and the guy the guy his name was jimmy he used to mow our lawn he said chadwick you too fat to play guitar. <laughs> I said, well, what should I play? With myself? He said, well, you, I saw you do that before anyway. And I said, okay, well, what should I play? And that's and what they said, say. Your strings are too small if you play with yourself. So it's... <laughs> the fingers were too big. So, and, then, and then he said, then he gave me the bass, and I was, how old was I? Shit, I was 15, 16, and the bass has, has been my instrument, you know? So, mm-hmm. but playing the blues, that's how I started. And then I just, you know, with the old albums, you uh, pick it up and listen. Oh, oh, he's playing this riff. I never had mm-hmm. schooling. I didn't need it. I had good ears. What? Mm-hmm. I don't need more. I'm old as dirt. <laughs> no, that was the thing is, though, 
what without the classics, nothing that we have now would be here. And that exactly. is why a, a lot of true mm -hmm. musicians and a lot of people who really just love music that aren't mm -hmm. elitist saying only this type or only that type. Yeah, those those yeah. people are closed minded. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to pay tribute to bands agree with that. that pay boy. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually I've actually had an argument with a guy out of Arizona a couple months ago. He was mm -hmm. on my Facebook and he was just like he goes why do you like so many different kinds of um, genres? He goes, there's only one metal. And I'm like, that's where you're wrong. And he, I'm like, you are wrong on every level when you say that. And I said, you were being, I'm like, you're being biased for your own reason. And I'm like, and you're being very narrow minded and pig headed. And he goes, there's only one kind of metal. He goes, I've been, I've been a judge at several contests and this and that. And I'm like, and you still didn't learn a damn thing, apparently. You know, it's like, you know, here's the it's, thing about it's everything. Here's the thing about yeah. critics, is which is what I'm going to call this guy. They're going to pick apart what they like because that's mm -hmm. human nature, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, you put 10 people in a room, mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you at least three of them are going to have a difference of opinion, if not more, on mm -hmm. what they like. You exactly. know what I mean? Metal well, is metal, all right. of it. And, exactly. and the subgenres and everything, it's all part of metal. If you like it, listen to it. If you don't scroll on by it, find something you like. Don't tear somebody exactly. down because exactly. of what this they like. Exactly. exactly. This guy sounds like he sleeps with his hands underneath the covers, you know? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you got this a whole exception at a whole level. different level. <laughs> no, I know I mean, it's a game I mean, the, the thing with the latest, and this is the problem that you have, is that when you just pigeonhole, you can only be meta if you just like this one genre. It limits so many other, well, it limits creativity. And, yeah. and the problem with that is it's also, I mean, as a musician as well, I mean, I know, like, for example, with my laps, we did a lot of different subgenres. And our criticisms used to be, oh, well, you, you experiment with too many different genres. And I was like, well, why not? I mean, an artist is an artist because you shouldn't have limitations or right. boundaries to what you naturally feel that you can write, you know. And so that's why during the years I never kind of um, stuck to just one genre, you know. I, I kind of, you know, mixed it up a little right. bit. Don't get me wrong, you know, my, my tastes have gone heavier and we are going to write a melodic death metal album. But, you know, when you look at the history of my labs, you, you look at all the different types of you know, subgenres that we did. And I don't regret any of it. You know, some people will say, oh my God, yeah, you're death metal, but how come you did this? You know, and I'm like, well, because at the time, that's what I was listening to, you know, so, and I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. try and, you know, please other people because part of writing, I think, is being, you know, genuinely authentic to who you are and what you're listening to at the time, you know, uh, even if your, your taste change, I mean, that's gonna, uh, gonna be in inevitable at some point, you know, you will start yeah. thinking, like, like how I was saying to you before, you know, I start, I started to listen to like bands like Suffocation, Morbid Angel, Obituary, Carcass, you know, and, oh. and then my, my taste just became really brutal. But for a very long time, you know, I did experiment with different Skinner. types of genres. And I, yeah, and I love my gothic doom, and I love all different types of genres, which is why I do like mm -hmm. things on my laps. But I don't know for you, Hugo. So here's a question for you: Have you always been into the brutal stuff, or did you ever go into any other kind of stuff? Did you ever write different types of genres, or mm, no? I no. I, um, I, I when I start to to write songs and compose songs. Mm -hmm. Always uh, mm. a kind of brutal, but, but I, I love all yeah. kind of trash, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Not a uh, doom, yeah. doom metal is, is good. I like black metal, mm -hmm. some some, I love some doom bands, doom are good. Now, yeah. yeah. But yeah. when I start with my band, it's always uh, kind of brutal with with uh, doom metal and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't, yeah. I don't start with other kind of like more, more slow bands, maybe. About yeah because i was listening to some of your stuff and I, I really liked how you had a lot some very slow parts but then really heavy stuff as well which i thought was really good yeah. there was a real good dynamic in your music which i really really yes. enjoyed and um, it kind of was almost i would say progressive in some places because you've got such an intelligent way of writing because you've got that sort of like very sort of slow and then it might even become very instrumental but then it'll go into really heavy massive like 
huge sound and you're yeah. like wow and i think that dynamic makes the heavier parts heavier yeah that was you kind know? of a progressive i uh, agree like progressive metal in yeah I like, really I like good stuff everyone should listen yeah. to his band seriously i'll put a link up a bit later on it's very very oh, i've listened to it yeah what did you think did you did you like it as well eric I did. Um, I do like his music, and I like the buildup. As an artist myself, um, we've done a lot of straight in-your-face brutal death metal, but as a solo artist, I've mm -hmm. done other different genres. But music mm -hmm. that has um, it has the brutality, but also the slow, heavy wrist in there, it, it can mm -hmm. allow you to tell a story, and it makes it not so um, expected to be brutal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know what I mean. Like, if you mm. put the, the slow melodies in there and then you come out with brutality, people don't expect that really, but it makes the mm. song. But if you take a mm. band that's just straight brutal all the way through, even though they're good at it and they succeed at it, it's mm. still, I think it would be better to have that build up, to build up to that catastrophe inside of you. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's just my opinion. That's Sounds like the movie. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I think bands Appreciate like Opeth also do, do that really well as well. I think bands like, well, early Opeth anyway, the uh, aggress, you know, the really sort of progressive death metal stuff. I mean, I know back then when I was listening to um, the early stuff like, uh, or you know, um, Black Water Park and Still Life and all that, and uh, you know, you just can't believe how how a band can go so melodic, so you know, beautiful. It's almost like um, what's the word? Heaven and hell in a song. <laughs> you know, you've got this beautiful sombre part, and then all of a sudden it just goes into this like proper demonic guttural death metal growl, and you're like, yes, <laughs> you're putting your horns in and the air, and it's so cool. What I like to call that is thoughtfully controlled schizophrenic rage. <laughs> <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a song titled that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, so so another question then um, to some of you guys. Um, what have been... What do you think are the challenges that you face, either as a musician or as a, um, for well, what, what you do, I suppose? Have there been any challenges and how have you overcome them? So should we start uh, with uh, Fran, maybe? Sure, why not? I am not a musician. I don't know how to play any instruments except maybe the flute. That is mastered. I don't need anyone helping mastering that shit. That shit is down pat. But, um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, no, I do just to say that. I know. <laughs> what else am I? That's the only <laughs> instrument I can play. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> what is the <that> song? <laughs> So anyway, um, oh my nipples you know, are hard now. <laughs> but I've gone through. I'm still going through it actually, because you know the savages are still relatively babies in the scene. You know, I mean, we've only been around a few years. It'll be three years in November when I started the savages, and you know, we're still. You know, there's still a lot of people who don't know about us, but we're getting out. You know, it is getting out. It is you know getting out globally, slowly but surely. Especially more the Midwest. You know, in the states, obviously, because it's home. You know, but since Karina, I mean, since you came along, I already knew bands and met bands who heard about me through their own people, you know, on the other side. But once you came in, it was like, you just mass cross promoted each other. It was just mass introductions, you know, and it was, it's yeah. been beautiful, but because being a female, it does mm -hmm. damper it a little bit. Cause especially cause I'm not a musician, you know, and, mm -hmm. but what people, a lot of people don't know is I've been caught up in the musicians, you know, in the music scene for about 15 years in the local scene, you know, with different fests that I've been involved in, you know, and just helped out always on the back end. I was always in the back end of the scene, you know, so I saw a lot of shit that the bands went through and the, you know, and what everyone went through and what it took to just put on that 45 minute set, you know, what, what all the promoters and the bookers, you know, all the stage crew, what they went through and shit. I did as much as I could to help. And that's when I came up with the savages, you know, I was just like, you know what, I want to bring some ladies together and just start helping the bands get out there more, do whatever we can do and just grow, you know, and there's still, you know, there's still, you know, there's still some people that'll be like, you know, you, you guys are all women and you're not going to get far enough. You know, you got to show, start showing more tits and ass, sex sells. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be one of those broads. I'm not going to be 
those ladies that have to show their tits and ass to be mm -hmm. seen in the scene. Mm -hmm. If I have to, if I have to build my up, my, build myself up slowly because I actually want to do what I represent and what I stand for, which is mm -hmm. representing women who are strong and independent and willing to say, mm -hmm. go fuck yourself. I'm going to still do it my way and keep mm -hmm. our clothes on doing it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to represent yeah. that. And yeah, I will, you know, it's, I'm, I'm standing firm on that. And, you know, I am very, I'm very strong willed, very strong minded, and I'm a mm -hmm. thousand percent for the music scene. And I just, mm -hmm. you know, it, I would love to have more women who are mm -hmm. like minded, who are very much caught up in the scene, who want to do the same thing that I do, mm -hmm. you know, right. and get yeah. out there, you know, get out there, get the music heard, help the bands be heard, and help, or help us get yeah. out there you know yeah. so more people know who we are and that we are real and we do represent and it's not just a show for us it's not about mm. us it's about mm. the bands mm. and i'm firmly sticking to that 100 mm. and yeah. because you know because there's no men there you know i've been asked by guys oh it's, do, do you have any guys in the background who are telling you what to do and you're just adding you know what are you serious yeah. no i don't need a fucking man <laughs> to tell me what I should do and how I'm going to do it. It didn't work when I was growing up, but sure, it's fucking going to work now. <laughs> you know? Listen, and, I think it's a huge problem, Fran, because, you know, there's the, you know even with, with me growing in the scene as well, like, there's so many people that have asked that question to me as well. Like, do you have a partner who's a man? Or do, have you got... And I'm like, no, this is, this is me. I've put my heart and soul into this since I was 15, 16. And... Um, you know, and for me, I think, you know, mute metal and stuff for me has never been about uh, judgment and things like that. So I think for me, like like what we did with the Rage Breed group rules was basically say to everyone, just be who you are, regardless of what, 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 what you believe in and stuff like that. But just don't like like don't be horrible to each other basically it's it was that was one of the main things that we've put in our in our, in our group and stuff and um to be fair since we put those rules up and in the group i don't think we've had um much of a problem with it but i hear you when it comes to you know guys that ask that question because i've had so really many sucks. people it say, sucks because sexism is very real still in the music yeah. scene it is. you know and it it's all over. it does all over. Mm. You, know, you know, yes, it is more of a male dominated thing, but the women are coming out bigger yeah. and more and they're start, they're making yeah. their presence known. And that is beautiful. I fucking yeah. love it, you know, mm. and I just, you know, yeah. there are a lot more guys who are open minded to the idea, you know, but you just always have those few yeah. who just want to be that guy. You know, they just exactly. have to be that guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have something <clears throat> to say. Um, I agree with you on that because my wife and i we run misanthropic records all right mm -hmm. it's a family it's a family run label underground label promotion company but we've had some bands on the label that when my wife addresses them they don't they don't pay attention they're like let me talk to your husband or whatever mm -hmm. it's like anytime we, we have weekly meetings with the bands to figure out what we need to do to help the bands get to the next level but mm -hmm. it's like they won't even hear her because she's a female and they pass mm -hmm. right over her so I have to, in turn, turn around and say the same thing she just said exactly, in the same yeah. words that she just said, and then they right. hear it. But, you know, it, it's very, very sad that the mind frame these days, we're in 2021 now. Sexism mm -hmm. and racism and all that shit should have been gone already. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. I agree yeah. with that. And, and you know, I've had so much racism that, you know, and sexism were since I started Rage Breed. And, you know, you'd think in this day and age that, um, you know, we wouldn't have that. I mean, m metal has always been a global thing. And when you look around, how many festivals we have all over the world? We have it all oh, over I... the world, you know. And we have, you know, now I think it's, it's better now because there's so many female singers now. Whereas before, mm -hmm. I remember when I was growing up, there was only like Hole or Churisitana, Manhole. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but there was very, very limited. And I remember yeah. um, speak. Well, I actually met Harry B okay. at a Rock City mm -hmm. concert and she and we'd got four K's in Kerrang! My nuts had and I met her and she mm -hmm. said it's going to be tough. She was honestly saying that it's going to be tough because she says, you know, there are so many judgmental people out there, you know, um, but she she gave me this pendant and this bunch of roses and everything. And um, and you know what? 
it really was and I, I didn't expect it to be as tough as it was you know um you know when you're having say i don't know um people message you and say go back to your own country even though i was born in england you know i was like well okay right. <laughs> i don't have to move then you know but you know when you have things like that you just think wow that's that's just mad that people think that mm -hmm. way you know um but i do think um you know like what you're saying eric i don't think racism or sexism or any kind of prejudice regardless of what you look like should be in the rock and metal scene. i don't think it has exactly. a place in it because yeah sorry sorry just, i was just saying just because the reason is all of us dress the way we do to be authentic and individual to ourselves and that's what garth rock metal represents is to it's to be the real isn't it it's to be this yeah. is who we are yeah. this is what we represent yeah. you know yeah. so things like that i don't understand no exactly yeah, I, and it. i have no problem her being on top you know i don't have to be on top all the time <laughs> See, you know, touching on what you just said, Karina, um, if you go to a, you go to a metal concert, a festival, a show of any kind, you walk in there. What do you see? You see human beings. You see human beings of all different creeds. Some mm -hmm. people come from different countries to go to a show, but yeah. we're all there. We're all united as one. And rock and roll, when, when rock and roll was founded, it was all about going against the grain. Rock and roll yeah. was about being a rebel, being who you were at yeah. whatever cost. So yeah. these people who are trying to preach in order to be metal, you have to like this, you have to like that, or whatever, mm -hmm. they need to go somewhere because that's not what the scene's about exactly mm -hmm. yeah you know, I agree. yeah no and what, what about you johnny have you had any challenges in what you've done i suppose because you, you owned some companies before you were doing some interviews on what's hot have yeah. you come across any challenges or anything no, like I, i've i've seen a lot of that in the show especially in the show business mm -hmm. <laughs> um too much of it but see, uh, uh, my company that I had in Orlando, Florida, what's hot, uh, I was always fair. And uh, I always let, uh, I, shit, I had cameras that instead of camera guys, I had camera women. Uh, I wanted them to do it. And I had people, women interviewing. I think they had the, I think they did the best job. The, you know, it's, it's just that shitty cliche from, 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 from the 50s, 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. uh be staying at home not even working uh barefoot and pregnant you know what i mean mm -hmm. but now it's changed and i'm glad it's, Bare, it's i'm all for the barefoot but the pregnant <laughs> <laughs> no more spawn coming at me i'm done <laughs> we'll talk about that later I have one. That's all I need. Need. Well, i'll be playing <laughs> the flute later i'll be busy <laughs> Should we play the flute for the <laughs> oh okay damn I want to see the video. Anyway, <laughs> I have a flute. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, 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 you know. No, but I was always the, the guy who uh, always fair, and especially in the entertainment business. I've seen a lot of producers, uh, uh, film producers, uh, uh, music producers. I've seen a lot of girls. They, they even came to me. They said, I can do this and this and this, you know. But me, I'm a type of guy I joke with. I say, oh, really? Show me again. I didn't get that, you know. I said, listen, sweetheart, if you're going to do that, nobody's going to respect you. You know what I mean? You're yeah. just a sex object. And that, you know, I and said respect you. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice on TV. So I'm my friend right now. It's okay. I, like, I get distracted often, so it's okay. I'll go play your flute. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's a distraction. It happens. <laughs> I'm lost. I forgot what I wanted to say. Jeez. There's a lot wrong with me and Johnny. There's a lot wrong with us. <laughs> we'll get it mended. <laughs> it what happens. about you, Hugo? Have you have you had any challenges being, uh, you know, doing what you do? Have you had uh, come across any challenges or anything like that? Hmm. Depends. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some bands that, that in in my in my scene. There are sometimes mm -hmm. they are like jealous or maybe 
mm. I don't know. And they they try to to speak bad about your band or something like that, or they yeah. start oh, yeah. to all the time. Oh, and they yeah. try to they try the to everywhere. to be more aggressive. Fans, yeah, you know, and mm. and have more fans mm. and things like that. And you 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 start to have a like a like a career. I don't know the word. It's like a, it's like a uh, fight, rivalry, you know? maybe. Yeah. Yeah, rivalry. So, uh, yeah. But sometimes mm. these things uh, is better for you because that uh, that mm. push you to make uh, a, a better music, push a better a better mm. um, scene in the, in, in your videos or something or, or mm. try a new songs, new riffs, new cry, new, mm. new try uh, songs, you know, and that's good. But for me, it's good when people start to talk about you because you are doing good. <laughs> yeah. I must be doing great then. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You have to be. Yeah, bad publicity is, is actually good publicity. Yeah. Bad publicity yeah. can be a good thing because it's like, you, you know what? You heard the shit what you heard about me. You. You're going to remember that shit. You know? Yeah. It's not always a bad thing. No. Yeah. Because yeah. exactly. there's That's always. That's so true. You hit the nail on the head You're always going to get hate. And I was watching this video actually recently, which was saying. um that actually your success is measured on the level of haters you've got because yeah. you know it's really funny because they were saying that if people That's don't true. know about you That's they won't judge you whereas yeah. if people if there's a lot of people talking about you it means you've made you've made yeah. some sort of you know impact on their lives yeah you're still um, like you. fucking famous then <laughs> yeah do you, do you know what i'm saying it's kind of like but but I mean I, I mean I've had this and and what Hugo is saying actually you know I I relate to that completely because we have that as well and we still have that you know but Same I think here. it's really about yeah and that you know I think everyone probably on this chat has gone through that and some oh level, hell yeah hell yeah you know yes. and 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 I think it's really about believing in yourself and rising above that because the real the reality is is. I do believe in self-defense, but you can't, you've got to choose your battles wisely. That's something that I've learned recently. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes if it's something that's small that can be resolved, you can try and resolve it. If it's something that is really, really, you know, where you can't go past it, then just ignore it, move on, delete block and move on with your yeah. life and, and, yeah. and do and do great things, you know. I mean, exactly. continue to do great things because that's the thing, I mean, it's like what you were saying, Eric, and I, I use that quote quite often, you know, before you were saying you put 10 people in a room and, um, you know, three of them are probably going to have something bad to say or, you know, and it's so true because it's like when you look at all the sign bands, when they release a music video and you have a look at the comments on their videos, you usually have all kinds of like comments on there, you know, when you look at it and you think, yeah. oh, that guy is mm. such a prick, you know, <laughs> you look at that and you, think, and you read them and you're thinking, wow, some of them are supporters, some of them are horrible, some of them are just clueless, they don't know what they're on about. And yeah. and that's social media for you, isn't it? Because you're never yeah, gonna please um, everyone. And, and that's you the know? thing about social media though. The mm. type of people that love music, that love metal music, mm. are not on Facebook. Now don't get me wrong, there's some people there that, that love music and everything or there to support it. But on social media, nine times out of ten, you're gonna find people who just wanna talk shit. Who wanna mm. make yeah. somebody's that's day horrible right. because they can do that and that's social media has given them a license to do that without a consequence yep. and you know? i call i call them weekend warriors that's all i i call them keyboard mm -hmm. warriors in fact i wrote a song yeah. about them <laughs> keyboard, <laughs> keyboard warriors they're everywhere the cowards yeah but, and and do you know do you know what's, what's what's good though is it does character develop you though because i think if you hadn't gone through anything bad or and, and i think there's a really big you know, difference between a hater and someone that offers you constructive uh, criticism. What yeah. Do you not think? Like Chris, There's a big Chris, difference. There's a very big difference. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you say somebody came to me and said, Queen, you know, um, have you considered doing something like this? Because this is what I think is happening at the minute, but why don't you try doing it this way? I'd be like, yeah, cool. Okay, let's have a look at it. Let's see if it works. You know what? But I get the same thing. thing yeah. I was gonna say and, I get and, the same thing with my interviews, yeah. like the interviews I just posted on the Savages. I did literally it was a last minute decision for the show I went to mm -hmm. um, last weekend, and 
it was a last minute decision. We only had so much product with us. I had no backdrop. I didn't know where the hell I was going to do the interview. And I had to find the ba the basement was the only like cool place because mm -hmm. it was like a hundred degrees last week. And mm -hmm. you know, you didn't, you didn't have the band right there. You didn't, and I didn't want people jumping in on the damn camera because I knew it was going to be going live. Yeah. So we had to work with what yeah. we had minimally. And then after, after I posted it, everyone's like, why didn't you do more editing? Well, you, they're like, you cracked so many jokes. You were just, you were being you instead of being more on the professional yeah. level. I'm like, so why do I got to be what you think I should be? I'm like, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be exactly. me. That means I'm going to be yeah. cracking jokes that, you know, some people might find offensive, but they're not to me. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be, I, I have a trucker's mouth. I know I swear a lot. I don't give a shit. That's how I roll. I'm going to be me, you know, know, and there are yeah. more bands out there who appreciate a legit interviewer who's going to actually have fun mm -hmm. and not just do their job. Yeah. And that's what yeah, I want to yeah. do. You know, if I, if I had more preparation, there would have been a better environment. I would have had a backdrop if I knew I was going to be in a basement, mm -hmm. you know, stuff yeah. like that. But Did you have a flute. Um, he, 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 <laughs> the flute was busy with, with the camera. <laughs> so, uh, uh. He was preoccupied. Okay. <laughs> There's a song. There's a song that everybody needs to listen to. Yeah, it's up on YouTube. This song, everybody needs to listen to this. If you're I, if you're ambitious about anything in your life and you're doing anything, you're gonna want to listen to Zero Fucks by Misanthropic Torment because that is what you have to have in order to get anywhere. Um, do what yeah. makes you happy, man. Because exactly. like everybody is going to have something to say. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's not gonna happen where you please everybody. Exactly. Just like the old exactly. saying, you, you know, you opinions are like exactly. assholes. Everyone has one, you know, or is one. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I mean, apparently, I, I've offended the whole online that. world. So, <laughs> welcome. I think I, I, I think social offend, media though. has its pluses and plus. Yeah, yeah. I mean. For me, social media is a good networking tool, you know, it's very good for bands to promote their stuff. I mean, you know, I'm an influencer, I work for Amazon, I do loads of different little bits and bobs, I do modelling, so obviously for me, it's a really good platform. Um, and for the bands and obviously what we promote and stuff but then you like it like you were saying that there, there are people out there that use it for negative purposes. And unfortunately, Facebook don't have better rules in place for things like this i don't think I'd, i think they need to have a little bit more uh, yeah. stringent rules because that they're not i mean there's opinion and then there's cruelty you know and yeah. i think you know and i think that's where the line should be drawn whereby you know if, so, if people say something that they don't like that's fair enough you don't have to like everything you know that's 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 fair play you know it'd be really boring if everyone liked the same thing but i think mm, it's how yeah. you how how you communicate that like for example i mean i remember a long time ago um i, I was i wasn't really into this band much but everyone was you know and they were going what do you think about this band they're so good they're so good i said well personally it's not really uh, they're okay but i don't think they're incredible but that's fair play but that's just my opinion and that's because right. you know i'm not really a massive fan of that <laughs> kind of genre and um you know and i thought i worded it quite well and it really insulted someone like oh well you're just deleting <laughs> and, and I, think, I think with that that's the thing you, if you word it okay it's fine but you're always going to get these debates i think online but i do think where say someone starts insulting you and things like that i think there should be more done do you not think with facebook i do think so um right now i think facebook algorithms and everything are really screwed up because they're not paying attention to this stuff i'll give you an example this is a little off topic but they're they're banning disabling people's profiles or their band pages because mm. it has something to do with music yet there's yeah. a, pa a facebook page that is trying to promote pedophilia it's like trying to put them in with oh the God. lgbtq really? community yes I didn't yes know that. i've report yes i've reported this page like a hundred times my wife's reported it and they won't do nothing about it it says it doesn't go against their community standards yet a band page does that that doesn't make much sense to me no, so, that's I mean, bad, isn't they, it? But this is what I'm yeah. saying. These are these are the things that need to sort out for sure. Yeah, you know. No, I agree with you. So I think 
Well, do you find, okay, so when it comes to promoting music, what channels then do you guys use? What, what, what are your go-tos? What kind of, um, uh, apart from Facebook, what other, you know, places do you Instagram. promote what you do? Instagram. TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok is really good TikTok. if you learn how to work it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I still have yet to break yeah. into the TikTok. I still have yet to do that, but it's Instagram <laughs> is my other use. But yeah. eventually, yeah. Yeah. eventually yeah. I'll get into TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Instagram, yeah. YouTube, SoundCloud. Mm. And, and then I just have my promotion company that I hire. Mm. I mean, if I have some extra stuff that I need to get done and I can't do it all because I've got other stuff, I just have this other uh, promotion company that I hire and I give everything to them and they reach out to the people they've got to reach to and it gets around. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. I think that's the great thing about networking as well, isn't it? It's, it's you know, you get to, you know, have people on board that promote through theirs, you promote them and it's, it's great, great, great idea. Um, I've yeah. been using, let me think. There's been BizFluence that I've used. That's mainly for the professional side of things of what I do. I use LinkedIn. And I've recently been touching on Tumblr, uh, YouTube. We've got basically Instagram. And TikTok is new. And I'm still finding it hard because it's like, <laughs> there's, like there's so much stuff isn't there to do. It's like, you know, and what was really funny when I first started it, I put a few like this video together and it put on some really cheesy music and I was like oh my god I can't use this but then I figured out how you can search for bands like that are metal and stuff and I got used to I'll it. I'll help you figure that um, part. I'll, I'll help you figure out TikTok. Yeah. See I, I'm old school I still use smoke signals. <laughs> oh hey, hey wait 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 I use flyers. I use flyers. See I'm not that far Yeah. Back. Yeah I know. That's cool. Yes, well, here's, here's my promotional mug. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I got one too. <laughs> Yay! Cheers. I'm terrible. I should have my own mug. I have my own, you know, I got my web store that I got, that I put up, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago, you know. I throw that out of cafe, cafepress.com slash SVGLM. Oh, okay. All kinds of shit. And I still yeah, haven't even got yeah. my own mug. You still don't have You're your own mug. <laughs> What? Is, that, is that Mr. Flute? That's awesome. Oh my God. Should, he, should, he say, should he make his presence known? Yeah, come on. Ben, you are known as Mr. Flute. Mr. Who? Mr. Flute. Mr. Flute. <laughs> Whatever that is. What's up? How's everybody doing? Play me a this is Doug. This is Doug, like also that. from Spamicidal Jelly. All right. right. Oh, Otherwise, now known as Mr. Flute, What's up, bro. <laughs> Mr. Flute. <laughs> well, I said, talking about um, instruments they play, and I said, I don't play an instrument, but I do play the flute. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm Mr. Flute, all right. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, hey, Mr. Flute, can she hit the tone or not? Oh, she can hit every one of those tones, <laughs> every tone on the scale. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. <laughs> you, know, you know what they say, practice they makes done. perfect. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, hold on. If I'm correct, if I'm correct, this is Mr. Flute and this is Mrs. Flute. Yes. She, they're, <laughs> coming <laughs> like they're coming out with a new out with a new album. <laughs> I'm gonna write a song. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write a song called The Flutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then you can I, am, I am honored to be the inspiration, sign. Eric. Thank you. Yeah, I want to sign CD from your. But you guys got to get up on stage and demonstrate. <laughs> that could be arranged. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible, right? <laughs> oh, you started to stutter. <laughs> Bro, I saw you, oh, bro, bro, I saw you work really good. Respect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We yeah, are. really good. Really good. I like the band. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. We're trying well, to get well, you out of right now. Spamicidal well, jelly. Excuse me. Spamicidal jelly. Spamicidal jelly. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You didn't you us. play? Didn't you play at the uh, Empire of Fire show at uh? The Looney um, Bin. Yes. Yeah, we played uh, I set that Saturday up. the 25th, I think it was, of May, right? Yeah, I set I think so. Yeah, I'm the okay. one who set that up, yeah. 
Awesome. Oh. Yeah, man. Dang it. Yeah, that was a great time. I love playing that place. Actually, I think we're I playing there again in there. September. Set oh, it up yeah. there again. Set it up again. We're going to open up for them, Rough and Rude. And then they're oh. going to do the main act. I want to see the flute playing on the stage. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you better not miss a tone, woman. Oh, don't worry. Oh. Don't worry. I won't miss Just, any of it. Wait, wait, wait. Does the tone, <laughs> do the tone sound something like this? <laughs> no, no, not really. No. <laughs> a little higher than that. <laughs> Um, guys, just a bit of a, just a, just to Eric now. Obviously, you've got an event coming up, haven't you? Um, yes. If you just want to show the poster again, so people can see what is actually. This. So, range, so um, ourselves and Eric have uh, gone into sort of an affiliation, and uh, he's put our logo on the on the uh, poster. I think. Um, so the so poster, I, bro. I have. But unfortunately, I haven't printed out any new flyers with mm -hmm. your logo on it. But the logo that has Rage Breed on it is all over Facebook. I will be printing these ones out today. Rage okay, Breed cool. is going to be going right here. Lovely. But, uh, oh, you know nice. flyer. Do you Ooh. check this out? Do you check this out, everyone? Because this is going to be an absolutely stunning show. And you know that's going to be in the US. It's called Summer of Madness. Yeah, if you, you know want to tell that. everyone a little bit about it, Eric, if you just want to tell everyone a little bit about the show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me let me get this so I can read off some of the bands. But there's 22 bands in mm -hmm. all of Hill, Kentucky. Two days, free camping, pyrotechnics, a light show. We're going to have a metal flea market out there with a bunch of uh, different merch tables and food vendors, obviously some alcohol vendors. It's an all ages show. Um, mm -hmm. If you go on to the misanthropic records uh, page and go to events, you can find the event link and get your tickets. Tickets mm -hmm. are dirt cheap. It's $30 for two days. That's 22 bands cool. for 30 bucks, two days, That's man. You know, um, you need to put 23 on bands on the bro. <laughs> if I had <laughs> next one, next one, the next yeah. festival. Sorry, We're already Th this one about it for the next one. Dude. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, most yeah. definitely. But um. We're gonna. We might even have Kentucky Pro Wrestling out there. Um, that's still up nice. in the air right now. But I'm the fact of the matter I'm is, good. yeah. So basically, Saturday morning, you're gonna have Kentucky Pro Wrestling. So Friday night, while everybody's banging their fucking head, smoking weed, whatever the hell they're they're doing, they wake up in the morning at 10 a.m. and instead of getting bored and leaving, they get to entertain themselves with some pro wrestling. Oh yeah. Oh you know? no. And, and okay. the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if you find yourself in the Kentucky area and you're tired of being locked up in a box, go mm -hmm. get your vaccine and come on out August 20th and 21st and have a good fucking time, man. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And also, I just wanted to put something out there as well because uh, we also um are affiliated with metal in the mountains and we're also affiliated with bloodstock as well so if you're in the uk uh, do go and check out bloodstock festival you can buy the tickets from www.ragebreed.biz uh, it's on the home page scroll down and you can actually buy tickets there as well so just wanted to put oh, yeah. that up there as well so that's cool um <clears throat> so yeah so i just wanted to go to johnny uh, also because johnny's got a show called johnny's rock corner and I just wanted to talk about the embarrassing moments bit. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah. Yours, sweetheart, yours is coming up next Saturday. Your embarrassing moment with oh Korea. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so no, I you, am a huge fan of inappropriate behavior. Bro, <laughs> send, 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 hey, send me your, your, your story uh, mm -hmm. via vocals. Send me your story. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hook up later. It, it's you know it's the most embarrassing funny moments like the the first story that I had it, it's a true story too and because I used to work at a furniture company called IKEA and you had a bunch of kids running around on the carpets so I grabbed a handful of candies and I said who wants a candy and all the kids they lined up Man, if it's about candy and sweets they lined up all the time. so and at the same time I'm handing out the candies I'm patting this one kid on the head. 
And at the end, I turned around, I looked at him, I said, you want a candy too? And he looked at me with a mustache, and he said, I'm 43 years old, what the hell do I need a candy? And he bobbled <laughs> out, of, he, he out of my department. Well, I don't know what you call them, uh, little people, midget, dwarf, I don't know what they call themselves. I, I know what I call it, but I don't want to say it. But um, yeah, it was funny as shit. No, it's embarrassing as shit because I didn't know what to say. Oh, <laughs> yes. hey, he would take out your shins. You keep talking your shit. Well, I know he would have boxed my balls. <laughs> Haven't That's you ever seen movie. that movie, uh, um, Little Bad Santa? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a great movie. All right. You should learn your lesson from that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, help me out. I'm dumb. my mom dropped me a few times in my head when I was a child. What 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 was the name? What do they Bad call Santa? Santa. Bad Santa. Yeah, I know oh, the no. movie, but what did the dwarfs call themselves? I want to be oh. political correct. Yeah. Oh no, I, I'm I'm just speaking on learning your lesson on messing with little people. Oh, that by Shit. that movie. Shit. Yeah. You yeah. haven't had bowlings with uh, little people. You have. <laughs> Um, Fran yeah. knows what I'm talking about. Look at her. Oh, you're so disgusting, Fran. Go hey, play your phone. <laughs> Just I ain't seen a damn thing. Over <laughs> <up>. <laughs> oh, hey, let's go man. bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? I got a lot of friends that are little people. So do I. I love them all. I mm -hmm. hold them in their hand and help them through crowds a lot. Because a lot of people don't see them. I feel really bad for them. But when they get yeah. drunk, it's hard yeah. to get to them. It's hard yeah. to pick them up. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. yeah. I'm reading your thing. I have, yeah. a, I have one friend in particular that's from, but it's crossing my name. His name is, um, his name is Frank. Oh, and Frank. Frank, yeah. Okay. And he goes by Fank. He takes off the R. He goes by Fank. Yeah. Love him to death. Crazy wild partier. But he's a big boy. And when mm -hmm. he gets shit faced drunk, it's like a, you have to basically, it's like a roly poly. <laughs> and it, it took three people to pick him up and put him in my friend's car because I couldn't do it on my own. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just all dead weight in a minimized. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be offensive. It just was really hard. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, I, I love them to death. And then, you know, I, I, I have no problem helping them out in many ways, you know. Yeah, I just I speak right. with little people because that's like the more appropriate term, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I don't, you know, midget used to be midget. I'm not a midget, okay? You're a little person. I'm not a little person. Well, shit, I don't know what to say anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I I could have been Johnny. Rude. Well, you know what? On that note, I think that. Since we're here talking about political correctness, right. um, my my opinion is not that of a popular one, so I, I'm sorry if I embarrass anybody here. But um, I think a lot of people just need to get over their feelings, man. Um, like Agreed. To, in, to, well, in yeah. today's society, um, there's a difference if you're trying to insult somebody and hurt their feelings, and then there's you. You don't know, but if you say something online. People are going to jump down your throat, and then cancel culture is going to come along and try and mm -hmm. do their crap to you. Everybody just needs to just get the fuck over it and live exactly. life. Because yeah, exactly. this, this online is not real life. When you step outside into your neighborhood, that's yeah. real life. Try and talk to somebody in your neighborhood like you talk to them online. That's all well, I yeah. got to say. Well, I, there were two of them in my high school, and we were really good friends. So, and, and uh, I said, let's sit down and talk, you know? <laughs> and he asked me, why should we sit down and talk? I said, well, every time you talk to me when, you're sta when we're standing, you're always breathing on my dick. I don't like it. So let's sit down and talk. <laughs> so far, <laughs> was that wrong? So we just sat down and we had a great conversation, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Or, or I grew up. Up. It's true though. Yeah, right? oh, you're you're like, good, I'm man. Not, I'm not racist. I was the only black you're guy. You're such a jerk white... today, seriously. I was, yeah, I'm I'm okay. the only black guy. Like, I was in the black guy. You know, he should be a fucking comedian, I swear. Well, you have, you have, you have, 
I don't need to kind of laugh as much as much as when I'm it listening was, to you. It's so funny. Well, it, it was turning me on. You you know the movie Deliverance. <laughs> <That's a boy. laughs> who who yeah. wants a T-shirt? Anybody want a T-shirt? Say, wait, lift it up. I'll take it. I'll cut that shit up. Send it to me. <laughs> I'll wear it in one of my videos. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah! That's so, awesome. Friend, go play flute. I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but, <laughs> no, but the, the thing is, no, but he understood and he laughed his ass off. It was funny, you know. That's the way mm -hmm. I am. I don't know. I'm not right in the head anyway. That's why I play rock and roll. Yeah. He, if I was right That's in the fine. head, I'd be I'd be wearing a tie, working at the bank. Yeah. Okay, guys. So the other question I wanted to ask you, because uh, I'm going my actual. Oh, let me just have a look. Hang on. Yeah, my battery's running low. I've only got like fifteen percent battery. Yeah, <laughs> my battery's running low. Go so, yeah, good to you, so, um, so a bit of a question then. So to just to end this chat and everything, what are your plans for the future and what you do? So what kind of things do you want to see? So Hugo, let's start with you with the band. What would you like to see in your future in terms of? Uh, your band of what you do for Rage Breed South Africa, you know that kind of sorry South America. What what things do you want to see happening for your band and for the group? Um, well, I, I like I tell you, uh, I will travel to US in one month, so I mm -hmm. really want to make a, a, a tour in US. Mm -hmm. I really want that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the other thing, I, I will uh, keep in touch with bands with South, South America and mm -hmm. uh, make some interviews for Rage Breed. And mm -hmm. I think it's good because the, a lot of bands in South America and Latin America <laughs> really want to, to be heard for other countries. So I, I think uh, they need this push uh, with mm -hmm. interviews and things like that. It's, really good for the scene the latin scene and i really want to i will i really want it to be on tour for around mm -hmm. the world you know mm -hmm. it's my dream mm -hmm. for it with my band it's, it's, i think this is the dream of every musician to be on yeah. tour for sure around yeah. the world around the world yeah mm -hmm. that's lovely that's, that's really that's, good that's mm -hmm. my dream Awesome. Amazing. Live your dream, brother. Definitely. Live out your dream. Live out your dream. Live your dream. Live your dream. Um, so you go, you are back. pounding that bottle. That shit is gone. <laughs> that was full oh. when we started. <laughs> I know. I just, you, there's a, just a little bit of tequila. Not too much. I have to, to, to take a little bit. But What's oh, your idea of not too much? A bottle? Is, 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 <laughs> it, is it warm in it? <laughs> yes. What, take a what little bit. You, not too much. Fran, what about you? Where do you want to see Savage and uh, Rage Breed USA? Uh, honestly, I just, you know, to grow. I mean, just to get out there so the bands to, to know more about us and know that mm -hmm. we are here for them. And mm -hmm. now to, to start bringing them into booking, getting more involved with booking and mm -hmm. just helping them get out there, you know? Cool. Of course, cool. you know, the Savage is growing. You know, the more ladies there are to help represent, the bigger mm -hmm we can get the more the bands can get you know it's it's a win-win situation with that you know um you know uh definitely you know talking more talks in it with them we're actually looking at thinking about doing a podcast you know and we've been talking about this for yeah we've been talking about this for about a month or two that would be more of like a real talk podcast because I just like to be me, you know, and I like to yeah. talk about taboo. I like to be very taboo and talk about shit that Facebook won't let you talk about. Yeah. <laughs> not that kind of, ta not that kind of taboo. That won't go live. But, <laughs> but I also want to be able to do band interviews. You know, it's the ideas yeah. that we were, you know, talking about is, you know, it's not going to always going to be about music. There's going to be a couple, of you know, a couple of weeks where we just have legit talks about shit people are afraid to talk about. You know, things that people yes. are finding offensive. Yes. We want yes. to get mm. out there and say there are people who are going to talk about this and you will not be judged mm. for it. And we're going, you know, we want to bring it out there. And then we want to have mm. other, you know, we want to do every other week, but we do want to do um, more interviews with bands and stuff like that, you know? Mm. So we want to get, you know, we still want to keep some of the music in there. And we're, of course, we're going to to some degree. But, you know, so the Savages are going to start, they want to do and um, get into podcasts. And I mean, Amy are going to start getting, you know, um, the YouTube going sooner, you know, very soon. There's just slow, mm -hmm. slowly, you know, we're slowly progressing and bringing things in. 
you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's chaotic for us, you know, especially, you know, with me, not just because of, you know, the, between Rage Breed, Rebel Radio, and The Savages, I have two jobs. You know, so there's not much flute playing. <laughs> I do it as much as I can. You poor thing. <laughs> you know, um, and I work a lot. I work an average of about minimum 65 to 80 hours a week. You know, and somewhere in between there, I try, you know, I get in as much as I can for the scene as much as I can. The weekends, I'm wide open, and that's when I start getting bombarded. Okay, this is due, that is due, this is due. I got to reach this person. I got to do this email. You know, and I'm game for that. You know, wide open? Um, it, it depends what. <laughs> Wait a minute! You just distracted me. <laughs> what did you mean by that? <laughs> uh, I it don't depends know, on man. the conversation. <laughs> um, there's al- there's always uh, there's always that drama. <laughs> You know, there's, there's, so, there is more that we, de- you know, that the savages definitely want to do, and we're slowly growing. You know, right now, it, uh, it's, we are looking for more ladies. You know, more ladies who are involved in the scene. You know, mm-hmm. that are about the bands, not about themselves. You know, of course, yeah, we got to promote ourselves a little bit and put our, you know, but it's not about us. And as we grow, everyone else will grow, and that's my main goal right now. You know, is different aspects, different ways we can go about it. And interviews and getting more involved, going to shows and doing live interviews, not just podcast interviews, but I want to go, I want to be able to go to shows and actually get the bands that are on stage and do a live interview with them, get them out there more, get them introduced to my audience that, you know, that they're, um, that they might not know the people of, you know, it's all about marketing. It's all about getting everyone out there. And that's the whole goal when it comes down to, and there's so many ways to go about it. There is, yeah. And a lot of it, you know, is, is about, uh, you know social media and promotions that way but also word of mouth as well you know when mm-hmm. someone's had a good experience with you um i know for you know with rage breed we've had some people come back and say oh you know i really like this and can you i've got a band here who wants to hook up you know even that is such a powerful thing you know mm-hmm. um uh, on, on the internet and through person as well so i think the more people that are coming together and you know helping each other rise right. Yeah. And that's and that's what I want for the savages, you know, the more girls we get, you know, the more ladies we bring in. It's not just about promoting, it's like, you know, we can help the show, you know, we can help the bands in the shows on top of that, not just the promotions, but you know, if the booking agent wants to stay, we want to bring the savages here to bring in that much more attention. You know, there's so many possibilities and endless possibilities that we are game for as long as it comes down to music. And that's just the whole goal in the end. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, music's got to be your divine passion, I suppose. Something that, for me mm-hmm. personally, I mean, it's something that has to come first. It's got to come from your heart. It's got to. You've got to be a music fan in order to mm-hmm. do what we're doing. You know, there is one main goal that mm-hmm. seems distant but very possible, and I've thought mm-hmm. about this a million times. Mm-hmm. And it's to one day, mm-hmm. on stage, get introduced, mm-hmm. and walk the same stage as you, Karina and finally meet you face to face marina and the savage on one stage that is a goal that is a goal that i am thought of several times just in the like more than several times just in the last few days i'm just like one day me and and karina will be on the same stage and i will lose the savage and burst into a savage fucking tears i don't care just to finally be able to meet you and give you a hug oh, because you are one of my best friends and I have come to adore you and love you and everything you stand for and everything you represent and I will always oh, have your back. Stop saying oh, that shit. Oh, you're going to make his own fucking Is that a Maxi band? Is that a Maxi band? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's but that is definitely a long-term goal is to, to walk on the same stage we and stand will do next it. to you. When my laps uh, tour next year, we were going to do it this year, but we've not got a bass player and drummer yet. But once we've got that sorted, I will be coming to America and we will definitely make that happen. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, also, so Johnny, what about you then? What's your plans, what are your future goals? Well, our plans right now, we're getting ready to. Uh, Hit the studio, uh, a new album from Rough Roots coming out. It's called Road to Thunder. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and what I want, I just want to play. I want to mm-hmm. get this uh, this album out. We're done. We're ready to go. 
we're ready for the stage. I just want to play. I just want to, you know, I, we're not going to make millions. I know that. I don't even want to make that. I just want food, drinks, 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 a little more French fries, drinks. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't even bring my fucking sleeping bag. I, we just want to play. You know what I mean? We want to mm. present our music to the people. Uh, shit. Rough and Rude is, is a big hit in uh, seven countries in Latin in America, brother. And, uh, you know, in America, our, our radio stations are playing our music here all through Europe. And I just want to hear England because uh, I, you know, I want to hold you in my arms, give you a big hug and, and a sugar kiss. And we're going to go out and get shit faced. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fucking rock the clubs. And then we're coming to, uh, to the States and I'm going to wear this fucking... A uh, 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 shirt that that's that's eight size too small for me on the fucking stage. I'm, I'm gonna look like Baby Herman, but I don't give a rat's ass because I'm one of the original ladies. But yeah, no, no. Our our goal is right now just to hit the stage. Uh, 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 Hungary, they want us big time. Uh, we're really big in Hungary. Uh, Germany is very interesting. Uh, interested. Uh, Italy, Spain. But the thing is, I, I, I want England. I, I want England. Uh, you know, I want to see my Karina. Uh, I, in the States, I'm American. Shit, I'm more American than half the people that deleted me in Facebook because of the old situation where that happened six, uh, four years ago. I'm American Indian. So uh, I want to go back home. I want to, I want to play. I just want to play. It doesn't matter if it's the cheesiest, smallest clubs to the biggest open air festivals. We just oh. want to play. My bands are so my band is so hot. I got I got two uh, uh, the one guitarist he's twenty the other one's twenty one. Uh, my oh. drummer is badass. Uh, my singer shit. You know we we just oh. want to present rough and rude. That's all oh. we want. And sure oh. it was hard worldwide because of the corona. Uh, I've got my vaccine vaccine uh, vaccine shots. So oh. that's one of the side effects. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of the side effects. Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> but you know, we're that's from the off. second shot. From what I'm hearing, it's the it second is. shot that's messing everyone up. You know what I did? I put on my underwear over my <laughs> pants last time, and I left. So, but that's okay. That's just that's what's <laughs> hey, You know what? That makes you Superman. Just saying, he wears his underwear over his shit. That just makes you Superman. I um, I, I do feel like I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we just want to fucking rock and enjoy mm. life. You know what I mean? But yeah. God's a woman, and uh, uh, she's got a dark humor. I know exactly why didn't this shit happen to me when I was 21? <laughs> you know? But I'm going to run on the stage the first gig. I'm going to run, hey, what's up? Fall over, mm -hmm. die, uh, die with heart attack. I don't care, but I died on the stage. You know? Mm. That's true, Rock, because I've been doing this years and years and fucking years. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, yeah. we're Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. I can hear. Oh, okay. His battery's He's gone. Freezing. He's freezing. Yeah, he yeah. froze up. Okay, should we go to Eric then while that's happening, and then if he comes back on, <laughs> call. I think he was losing battery, if you remember before. Yeah. So Eric, what about oh. you? What's your What's your plans for the future then? Uh, are you? That's a loaded question. I could write a whole mm. book about all my plans. <laughs> um, but, You're like you me know, then. Yeah, as an artist, as an artist in a band, my my plans are, you know, um, we have this festival coming up. After the festival, after we play this festival, we're gonna work on our next album, which is called Hashtag Kill Your Local Pedophile. <laughs> um, as and I have to speak as an artist, you know, um, a lot of my music is brutal, and people know this, but what I'm trying to get people to understand is the message that that we have within our music um we touch on a lot of things that we want to bring awareness to the world about like missing and murdered indigenous women you know 5000 people a year that are indigenous in america go missing they're brutally raped and they're murdered and nobody is really talking yeah nobody's really talking about this stuff they're talking about other things that were being force fed through the media and e even though our, our music is brutal and there's a lot of people that don't understand what we're doing, 
what, mm -hmm. what that, we're trying to do, hi brother, <laughs> what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring an awareness to the world to get people to open their eyes and stop turning the other way with a blind eye, you know, yeah. actually do something about it. I'm not saying for anybody to go out there and go down the street and murder your neighbor because he might be a pedophile. Although I would agree with that, but you know, that it's, it's a different thing. I, I'm saying open your eyes, stop turning the other way and do something about it. Stop bitching about the problems and actually do something. You know, yeah. that, that's from an artist standpoint, I, I would love everybody that hears Misanthropic Torment to be able to embrace that ideology. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you want to make a moving, difference, basically, isn't it? You want to make a difference when yeah. you want to see change. And, and, and so that's, I suppose, in a way, that's that's what's basically your... Um, your idea behind it isn't it it's it's something it's something like yes it's music but you want to address the issues that are happening in this world that people are turning a blind eye to and you yeah. want change to happen i would like change to happen unfortunately i don't feel like change is going to happen in my lifetime i mean the world's been fucked up this long ever mm. since i was born before so. i was even born so i mean but hopefully one day enough people will will want to do this here here's the thing us as musicians we, we have a voice that people hear even if our fan base is small we still have a voice that people hear there are dead people out there who don't have that voice mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. sorry i get emotional about this shit. don't tell nobody oh fuck, we're live damn it i have a heart <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong you with know? you eric <laughs> yeah but you know it, that, that's as, as an artist that that's my goal but um mm. now moving as a as a business person as somebody who runs a promotion company slash label a booking agency um mm. my my goal is simple we just made a uh we made a good connection with rage breed and mm. i want to see both of us grow and flourish in this community because we have a lot of the same goals we mm -hmm. think a lot alike you know mm -hmm. um i also work with metal devastation radio i would like mm. to have some kind of merger with all the people that we work with bring everybody together and run yeah. as even though we're separate entities run as one fluid machine that nobody can really mess with you know what i mean yeah um just build one big networking machine get these bands heard get them out there get them where they need to be you know um that's just the goal of any musician yeah absolutely that's that's a great idea you know and I, i'm definitely up for that um you know we we always want to get bigger we always want to get stronger and it, it's basically for so we can promote as much as we can you and i really do think alike we, we have we are on the same page there definitely so we will definitely talk more about that so i just want to say thank you to everyone here you guys have been amazing to interview you guys can yeah. see me yeah you yes we can see you um but I just wanted to say thank <laughs> you because you guys are so entertaining. You're so funny. You're so fluty. <laughs> oh, I like that word. I'm all fluty. And I've had a really good time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got it's, all it's all about the flute. It's always about the flute. <laughs> From what I hear, you got to massage these muscles right here. I don't know, though. I've never, Not a I've, I've never played. I've never played the flute. I don't know. Well, not a problem. It never reaches that far. Mm. Okay. Be before you go, I just have one thing I want to say to everybody really quick. Yeah, okay, cool. Yes, it's a rage breed radio. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was beautiful. Okay. That was beautiful. I tried that this morning and I crapped my pants. No, oh, that's you gotta do it from here, not your ass, bro. <laughs> It's funny, it's funny. I couldn't even try that. My shit will crack. My voice is deep enough being a female. I can I can only imagine what that would sound like if I even try. <laughs> I, you just left the door open for something and I'm not going there. <laughs> well, horribly wise actually. Okay, you so left the door you open. Mind. I came in and shut it. <laughs> Guys, it was great meeting all of you. We're gonna yeah. rock together. We're gonna make it big, huge, and we're gonna have fucking fun doing it. 
Tam. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, awesome man. guys. Meeting the rest of you guys. Definitely Hugo. Finally, man. Got to talk. Eric, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. We will. I got charged the phone first. Friend? No, that's fine. That's fine because me and Karina and a couple of the savages have another. Oh God, we're going to the same. Yes, that we have the savages have an announcement coming by this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So that's the next step for me and Karina. Then remind we do that me when we do talk. Remind me when we do talk to talk to you about savages because I have an idea. I think all three of us should go into a group chat and talk. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. I have a, I have an idea. Okay, All right. cool. All right, then. Okay, guys. See you soon, then, yeah? Definitely. See you soon. Oh. Peace. Bye. Man, send me your video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to go with that. I want to throw up the horns, or I want to, I don't know. <laughs> Bye, guys. There we go. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.